only a few fast and furious stages remain in the 2010 Osram Rally. The same stages that stand between the top contenders and the crown that will be presented to the Osram King of the Mountains. Back in Barclay East, crews are preparing for the signature stage of the event and probably the stage that will decide the outcome. With two cars inside the top six, the Osram is proving to be a very successful outing for the Pertec team of both Hein Latifan and Fissa Duplessis. It's a very difficult event. I must tell you the, the difference between a big accident and going well is extremely close. But uh, Team Pertec, we are at this stage, I think the top running privateer team, fifth and sixth, and Hein and myself are very close. Johnny Gimmel is currently struggling down in sevens, and with his championship rival leading the rally, this is not what the Castrol Toyota driver needed. Conrad Rotenbach is fourth, but has his sights firmly set on the three Volkswagens ahead of him. Yeah, yeah, the three VWs are going really hard, so it's uh, a nice, really nice stage, but they're so fast, it's hard to make up time, you know, it's just flat out everywhere. The organizers decided to have a regroup at this point, meaning that the order on the road for the remaining stages will be the same as the standings after stage four. Teammates Enzo Kuhn and Herkin Fecken have swapped the lead on more than one occasion this morning, and since Kuhn is the current leader, he'll take over the road sweeping duties for the rest of the day. Uh, it's, he, it's he that made a mistake, so now I'm leading, so now he's waiting for me to slide off the road. <laughs> now I've been sweeping the whole day, I'm going to give him a chance to be the broom. <laughs> This is War Trail, and as its name suggests, Stage 5 will also be the scene of the toughest rally battle yet. At 43 kilometers, War Trail combines fast and open sections with tighter and more technical corners. It's difficult to find a good rhythm, and as with any other stage on the Osram, War Trail leaves you with zero margin for error. After the regroup in Barclay East, it was now up to Enzo Keen and Guy Hodgson to sweep the road. It's something that no driver wants to do, as it is not only more slippery, but there are no lines or brake markers to follow. But this is something that Enzo Keen has done many times in the past, and his time of 21 minutes and 50 seconds over the nearly 44 kilometers was fast. Open, 70, left 7, into open right 7, and crest is right 1, into left 6, no cut. Uh, difficult stage. Le left rear, there's something wrong on the left rear. Um, I think the tire is flat or there's a major roll bar broken, so difficult driving, but we got through clean. But it was still impossible to know exactly how fast Keane's time was until there was another time set to compare it to. The next car was none other than the BP Ultimate Polo of teammates Hergen Fekken and Pierre Aris. Fekken looked fast as always, but 22 minutes and 3 seconds was a full 13 seconds slower than the time set by Keane. And the open right tightens. Into left 6, keep in. And right 5, keep in. Yeah, we had a pretty good stage, um, very quickly towards the end, I don't know, we had a good stage I think. Jan Habich and Douglas Judd provided another exhibition of perfect car control in the third of the BP polos, but Habich could only record a time of 22 minutes and 15 seconds, a full 25 seconds slower than rally leader Keane's time. Over the years, War Trail has proved to be a real test for both man and machine. This was the first time that Conrad Rotenbach would have seen these roads. But with the help of Peter Marsh, Rotenbach negotiated War Trail in exactly the same time as Fekin, down to every tenth of a second. But it was still 13 seconds off the pace set by Keane. But more importantly for the young Zimbabwean, it was fast enough to overall hubby and move into the top three. One right plus, Titans. Was it not for their earlier mishap, Mark Lonier and Robert Paisley would have been in contention as they again set a very competitive stage time. 20 minutes and 3.2 seconds was a half a second faster than both Fekin and Rotenbach, but could have and would have means nothing in the relentless world of rally. The Osram was in fact turning into a day of what could have been for Castrol Toyota. The hour-long break in Barclay East was obviously what Johnny Gemmel and Drew Starrock needed as they went into War Trail with all guns blazing. 
Gemmel was feeling a lot better, and the misfire under the bonnet of the Kessel Kyoto Horus disappeared, allowing Gemmel to win the stage by a rather large margin of a full 11 seconds, enough to rocket him up the leaderboard from 7th up to 5th. Team Pertik's run of good form continued on war trail with Hein Latergem and Juan van der Merwe and the second Pertik orders of Visser du Plessis and Gerard Sneijman setting the 7th and 8th fastest times respectively. Both of them however had no choice but to each concede a position to the flying Gemmel, but it was still a good performance. The time set by J.P. Damso and Callan Swan in the Total Evolution Toyota Runix was just outside the top 10 on this stage, but still good enough to maintain the 8th position overall. The second of the Total Evolution Toyotas, driven by Mohamed Musa and Grant Martin, managed to set the 9th fastest time on War Trail. 9th on the stage was also good enough for 9th overall, just 20 seconds behind teammate Damso. Rounding off the top 10 on War Trail was the most right polo of Evan Hutchison and Alvin Kutsia. Kuhn extends his lead at the top of the leaderboard while Rotenbach and Habich swap places in third and fourth. Gemmel's giant killing stage performance moves him up two places ahead of Latachan and Duplessis. Damso and Musa occupy positions inside the top 10 ahead of a recovering Cronier. Stage 6 is another Osram Rally Classic. Due to safety reasons, Yunung Nes Kluif is somewhat shorter this year compared to previous years, but to race through this valley at stage winning pace is still a daunting task. Osram Rally proceedings will come to an end with Faluk 2, an exact repeat of stage 4 from earlier in the day, and once again, both stages will have to be negotiated without the opportunity to service the cars in between. At such a late stage of any event, drivers are either fighting for a better position or protecting their current one. Evan Hutchison and Alvin could see no choice but to settle for a disappointing 12th position overall behind the wheel of the Motorrad S2000 Polo. It was even a more miserable weekend for Castrol Toyota's Mark Cronje and Robert Paisley, who were forced to settle for a disappointing 11th position overall. Cronje had competitive pace all day, but with Sassel South African rallying as competitive as it is, losing four minutes early on was always going to be too much. With no less than 16 S2000 machines starting a round of the Sassel South African Rally Championship, a top 10 finish is nothing to be sneezed at, especially if it's your first attempt at the Osram Rally and its dangerous mountains behind the wheel of an S2000. This is exactly what Mohamed Musa and Grant Martin achieved in their total evolution Toyota runnings. As far as their standards are concerned, Tienz Hubert and Cole Peskin had a relatively quiet day behind the wheel of the Salon Group Volkswagen Polo. Hubert quietly sneaked his way into the top 10 to finish 9th, just 10 seconds ahead of Musa. Jean-Pierre Damso and Carolyn Swan were hoping for a better finish, but the Total Evolution Toyota Runex was plagued by a misfire for most of the day. It slowed them down somewhat, but 8th overall was a good enough result to still keep their hopes alive of claiming the inaugural championship for private year. Fissa Duplessis and Gerard Sneijman have finished much higher than 7th overall before, but that was long before the days of 16 S2000 rally cars. Duplessis' season so far has been filled with all sorts of drama, but the perfect Toyota driver and his Aorus finally came together for a very respectable 7th placed finish, a result that will give him loads of confidence for the remaining two events of the season. It was a great event for the Pertik team with Hein Latergen and Johan van der Merwe claiming 6th position overall. Latergen has taken to the S2000 class like a duck to water and it is only a matter of time before he will be a real force to be reckoned with when it comes to fighting for overall victories. No less than 16 Premier S2000 rally teams made the long journey to Barclay East for the Osram rally. 
But besides the expense of S2000s, a further 14 crews also joined the action. There's no better place to hone your driving skills than in these mountains. And with the number of individual class championships still at stake, the action further down the field was just as furious. Class A7 is South Africa's top class for front-wheel drive rally cars. An A7 boasts a 2-litre engine just like an S2000 but with slightly less power and a sequential gearbox. It is basically the last stepping stone before reaching the big time and currently the home of Google Zulu and Cindy Harding in a BP Ultimate Volkswagen Polo. The rally newcomers Gavin Cronier and Van Aert Schumann in a Seasons for Africa Volkswagen Polo and former class champions Chris de Witt and Dean Derlinghuis in an Automark Toyota Runnex. Gavin Cronier is an experienced and multiple champion circuit racer, but for 2010, the Lamar Cup champion decided to swap his racing slicks for dirt tires, just like his brother Mark did a few years ago. Cronier has had an eventful season so far and showed good pace, but a lack of experience of the Osram Rally Mountains did not allow him to challenge for the class victory. Gugu Zulu and Cindy Harding have both seen these mountains before. Zulu is a multiple class A5 champion, and although Cronier put up a valiant fight, Zulu was dominant on three stages compared to Cronier's one stage win, and managed to clinch yet another class A7 win. Former class A7 champions Chris De Witt and Dean Rellinghuis have missed a few events during 2010, which means that they have little chance to fight for another title. But thanks to sponsors Automark, the rally veteran was back on the stages. De Witt was a bit rusty, but still survived the mountains for third in class A7. Now Sprague brothers, US and Danny Stussen, were the only ones in class N4 to make the long journey to Barclay East. No surprise then that they managed to win the class, but to win, you first have to finish. It was the third successive Class N4 victory for the Top Gear Motors Subaru and enough to clinch the Class N4 title with two rounds of the championship still remaining. Class A6 is for 1600 front wheel drive rally cars. Leroy Polter is another successful circuit racer who switched to dirt and his debut year in the Sassel South African Rally Championship has been nothing short of impressive. Together with experienced navigator Henry Dearlove, the Imperial Toyota Runex driver romped away with yet another class win, clinching the Class A6 title in the process. What's even more impressive is that the Imperial Toyota Runex was the first two-wheel drive car home, ahead of the more powerful Class A7 cars. Class veteran Craig Trott and Robbie Kutsia claimed second in Class A6 in the Total Evolution Toyota Runex. Class A5 is the point of entry into the adrenaline-filled world of rally. It is therefore also the place where future champions start their long journey to the top. One such future champion is youngster Ashley Haig Smith. Together with navigator Hilton Orfi, the Team React Toyota Yaris driver became the youngest ever class champion in South African rally in history. A bright future awaits the 18-year-old Catonian, who only received his driver's license a few days before the event. Fellow Class A5 competitors Morna Janse van Rensburg and Derek Jacobs endured bad luck from the start and were forced to settle for second in class. And who said rallying is a man's game? Class N3 for near standard production cars has become a battle between two competitors of the fairer sets. Megan and Oliver Verlach managed to take the class win in their Toyota Runex after a solid drive in trying conditions. But they were pushed all the way by the daughter and father pairing of Stefani and Willem Hichu in the Ville magazine runnings. Hichu recently received some training at the Rally Star Academy in Gauteng, and it is starting to show as she is becoming a real force to be reckoned with. The Link Africa Ford Fiesta of Robson Maganesi and Sean Fisser completed the class in three podium. Only two relatively short stages remain in the 2010 Osram Rally.